plans, while the White House, of course, has presented none. Our next guest was elected in November as part of the Tea Party surge that has been widely criticized, but not just by John McCain, but also by the White House and Democrats. Florida Republican Congressman Dennis Ross joins us now. Congressman Ross, from the frying pan to the fire, but you're always welcome here on Freedom Watch, and we appreciate you joining us. Thank I you, have Judge. a feeling that you are uh, going to vote against the John Boehner proposal, against the Harry Reid proposal, if it ever makes its way to the House, against any proposal that would increase the debt of the government of the United States of America. Am I right? Uh, you're correct, unless, of course, we put some systemic changes in there that reduce the deficit in the form of a balanced budget amendment that forces future Congresses to make sure that they operate within their means. When you ran for Congress, you promised the people who voted for you that you would reduce spending, reduce debt, and balance the budget. Congressman Ross, those, those ideas used to be bad Republican values. And now you and maybe two dozen of your colleagues are a minority amongst Republicans in the House of Representatives. How the heck did that happen? Well, I, you know, those, those are easy promises to make. And as we all know, making the promises is one thing. Fulfilling them is the real difficulty. And that's a real challenge. I believe we can get there. And I believe even if it's a small minority of us, we can work this to change, change the course of Congress. It may not be this weekend. It may not be today. But I believe that if we stay strong, the American people understand what it's like to have to operate within your means. You can't operate a household on a deficit continuing. You can't operate a business on a deficit continuing. You cannot operate a government on a deficit continuing. And we're at that point. Congressman, are you and I going to see in our lifetimes the federal government living within its means, or is this a hopeless cause that I'm advocating for and you're in the trenches fighting for? Well, uh, if, if not, we may see the federal government operating in a whole different fashion that is not going to be to the benefit of its citizenry. Uh, we've kicked this can, as they've said, so long. You know, people say, well, it's okay. We've raised the debt limit nine, over 90 years. Uh, well, that's the problem. We've continued to raise it. We've postponed the inevitable. Never once have we reduced our debt to the point where we don't need to raise a debt limit. Now we have to be logical. We have to be reasonable. I think the American public are demanding that. I think that sending to the states and a balanced budget amendment for their ratification will embolden the American people and put us on the track of austerity. I think we will be the beacon of the world economy if we go back to doing this. What kind of pressure have you come under within the Republican <laughs> caucus itself? I know they showed you some crazy movie where Ben Affleck played a, yeah. a thug who wanted another thug to help him do the unspeakable. But what kind yeah. of pressure have you come under within the Republican caucus to cave on your small government sound money values and go along with the establishment's proposal? Well, my arms are a little sore right now, but I expect <laughs> that to happen. It's what, you know, there's a lot of passion here. And when you mix the passion with principles, there's going to be a lot of emotion flying. And people are going to want something, you know, they're going to, they're, they're going to, they're going to work hard to get it from you. But I think those of us have been anchored uh, in solid principles who believe that we need to head, keep our compass headed to the, toward the north in order to get to our destination. We'll stay the course. It's not easy. No, it's not easy. But if it, would be, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. I believe we can get there. I'm very optimistic. I, you know, I have had some pressure from the speaker and others. But I got to tell you, I do appreciate what the speaker's doing. I wouldn't want his job at this particular point. It's a very difficult thing to do, especially dealing with this president, especially dealing with that Senate. All right. Where, where do you see this ending? I mean, will, will those of us who believe that the, the debt of the government should not be increased, that when the hole is too, dig, you, too deep, you stop digging it, uh, will we be satisfied or will the debt increase no matter your passion and the passion of your uh, several dozen colleagues? Well, my prognostication is that the debt will increase. Um, the debt will increase in a bipartisan fashion is what I expect. I, it may either be this weekend, it may be later next week, but something's going to come and give and take and it's going it's, it's to be uh, increased. I do not believe that it's going to be increased at $2.4 trillion that takes it through next election. I think it keeps it on the front burner and we're going to be debating this again in the next four to six months. And the American people will understand, I think, that absent a balanced budget amendment, we are not going to be able to get our house in order. So the debate will continue. I believe that we will prevent, uh, you, know, you know, not a, def a default. I, I, I don't think it's going to happen. A downgrade is very likely, but I think we can even prevent that. Unfortunately, I just do not see that there's going to be uh, a, a groundswell of Republican support about anything unless we have a balanced budget amendment behind it. Congressman Dennis Russ, keep up the fight, and thanks for joining us. Thank you, Judge. The Tea Party carried the Republicans into